Hey everyone, today I want to talk to you about productivity. And this is a video I've been really excited to share because I think so much of society has this vision or idea of what productivity looks like that in my opinion is pretty inaccurate. I think a lot of the stereotype of productive people is that they're working 24 seven, they're always at the office super late and they're there at the break of dawn. And I just don't think in real life, that's what productivity looks like. I wanna be productive, but I also wanna be able to have a life. How do we actually become super productive, but also not be miserable? How do we get over the tendency toward procrastination? How do we just get down to work and get into that flow state where we're just cranking and we're getting things done and we're doing things efficiently, I have some ideas about how to do that. And I'm going to pull these ideas from articles I've read, from research, from actual science that's supporting these ideas, as well as specific strategies that have worked out well for me. I don't want to just talk about having more willpower because just saying have more willpower to be more productive, that's not going to be helpful. You're not actually going to be more productive. Willpower eventually burns out and then you're left with the same problem. So I want to give you actual tools that will help you be more productive on a day-to-day -day basis. Hi, I'm Aylan, if we haven't met before, and this is my channel, Slice of Light. If you want more videos on simple living, minimalism, and building an empowering mindset, then hit the subscribe button below, and you can hit the thumbs up button if you end up liking this video. If you're willing to do those things, I'd really appreciate it because it does support me. The first thing I wanna talk about that's really about having a sort of mindset shift, you're gonna be way more successful at actually being productive if you think about the big picture. And I definitely think that's probably a theme in general on this channel channel that if you focus on the bigger picture and just try to live your life in a way that's in accordance with your big picture values, you're going to have more success in the long run. But I think with productivity, we can get so wound up in what's happening day to day that we forget the big picture of what are we actually getting done. Start thinking about when you're getting bogged down and am I being productive right now? Am I doing the right thing? Oh, I'm procrastinating again and I don't feel like doing work. Instead of getting bogged down in those momentary feelings, really focus on the big picture of what your overall goals are. So my first piece of advice is very simple and it's concrete and it's something you can do today. It's to either the night before or at the beginning of the day, think about what is the one thing that I've been sort of avoiding doing? What's the one thing that if I got done, I would feel much better at the end of the day? Forgetting for a second all the many things you have to do, just think about what's the one thing that if you got it done now, you'd feel really good about and do that one thing. Because so often I find when I have a bunch of tasks to do, there's one that's kind of nagging at me, that's kind of unpleasant or annoying, but I know I have to do it. And so I just kind of put it off. Sometimes there's this tendency also to put things off until their due date, especially those annoying things. And then they just add stress to your life because every day you don't do it, you're like, oh, I still have to do that. I've definitely done this. But what I found is that if I just figure out what is the one thing that's kind of stressing me out the most or feeling most burdensome, or that if I got it done, I would feel the most sense of accomplishment. If I can identify just that one thing and do it, I will feel a lot better. And my whole mood throughout the entire week will be improved and I'll be able to focus on things with more energy because I won't just be stressing or feeling procrastinatory. I'll feel like I'm on top of things and by feeling on top of things, I'll be more productive. And one thing I've noticed once I've implemented this strategy is that it often ends up taking way less time than I anticipated. So often it's some piece of paperwork or reaching out to somebody that I need to reach out to that actually only takes 10 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour. And it's something that's been just like hanging over my head for so long. Sometimes when I wait longer, it actually makes the task more complicated. But then also once I actually do it, it honestly goes so quickly that I've really found I just need to jump on things more quickly that are kind of those more annoying, tedious tasks, because in the long run, it'll just make life easier for me. My second piece of advice 
is to use all those 20 minute increments that you're tempted to just let go of. Now, I'm not saying don't ever take a break. That is the opposite of what I would recommend. But I do think sometimes when we have some kind of meeting, say in like 20 minutes from now, it's so easy to say, oh, 20 minutes, how much am I actually gonna get done? And then it's easy to kind of shift gears and start to scroll through some article or check social media or whatever it is that you do to avoid work. It's so easy to just like let go of those 20 minute increments because they seem so short. But I think if you can shift your mindset and see how a 20 minute increment can be so impactful, it can really enhance your productivity. If you could not just let go of those 15 to 20 minute intervals, but actually say, you know what? I only have 20 minutes. Let's see how much I can get done in those 20 minutes. I think will enhance your overall productivity. My third piece of advice is related to this, and that is to take intentional breaks. I think it's so easy in our society to have the mindset that you're supposed to be just constantly working and never take a break. But research actually supports the idea that we get into a workflow state for only a certain period of time and that if you take breaks between those states of workflow, you're just gonna be more likely to be productive. And so take very intentional, thoughtful breaks. They can be planned into your day, and they can also be spur of the moment breaks, but that are intentional spur of the moment breaks. So what I mean is so often we're kind of half working, half doing something else, or just working more slowly. Sometimes if you're in that kind of a state, it might actually be a sign that you need a quick walk around the building, or you need to just kind of get your mind on something else for 10 to 20 minutes because if you're just half working, you're gonna be way less productive than if you take a break, you feel refreshed, and you can get back to work and be truly focused. If you don't take breaks, you will burn out. So maybe you'll get more done in a week if you work every day from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., but you can't keep that up. And so in the long run, you'll burn out so fast and then you'll be totally unproductive. So I think really creating that balance and looking at the big picture, how am I over the course of the next three months gonna be the most productive, the most impactful? And that is going to involve taking really intentional breaks. My fourth piece of advice is self-reinforcement. And I think there are two ways to self-reinforce. One is just more mental, and this just involves sort of reminiscing or taking the time to think about your accomplishments, thinking about, wow, I really did this. Like, I feel good about this project that I completed. That kind of mental reinforcement can encourage you to continue to be productive. And a second form of self-reinforcement is to set up little prizes or rewards for when you accomplish a specific goal. And so setting those up ahead of time can get you excited and motivated to keep working. Psychologically, they found that positive reinforcement is far more effective at changing behavior than punishment. And so if you can get your on a positive loop where you're appreciating yourself for your accomplishments and you're rewarding yourself for things that you do well, it can be a really positive loop where you just keep getting more and more productive. I also think if you're someone who's a little bit perfectionistic, sometimes it's hard to pay attention to the positive things you do. And so I think it's really important to sit down and look over the past year, over the past week, what are a couple things that I feel really good about that I'm proud of? It might take you a few minutes to think of one if you're you're one of those sort of perfectionistic -y type people, but I promise you there's something you've done and that actually taking the time to do that, to reinforce yourself and to feel good about it, isn't prideful, it's actually just helping you be more productive in the future. My fifth piece of advice is to make your work more fun. And there are lots of different ways of doing this. One might be if you're not happy in your job, maybe it's time to think about how you could do a very intentional job shift in the future. Or maybe in the context of your current work, you could be volunteering more for projects that really excite you or the types of work that you like to do. So often we can just be on autopilot and we forget to take action that we can actually voice what kind of a role we wanna have with our supervisors or with our coworkers. And so take advantage of that communication, volunteer for things that excite you, and you probably will perform better and be more productive. Another thing you can do to make your work more fun is to change your environment. If you work at home like me, maybe you change what room in the house you work in. Maybe it's getting a coffee or a tea to make the whole process more enjoyable. Maybe it's listening to music. Whatever it is, changing your environment and your experience can make the work just feel more enjoyable. One last strategy for making work more fun is to think about how you can make those unpleasant parts of your job 
more efficient. And you know, we all have parts of our jobs that are annoying or that we don't like doing. That's just the reality of getting stuff done. And so figure out, are there ways that I could delegate some of this or that I could do this in a more efficient or easier way so that the burdensome parts of my job aren't so burdensome? Maybe part of this is self-reinforcing yourself for when you get those unpleasant tasks done. My sixth piece of advice is to follow your instinct and what excites you. And what I mean by this is that often we'll have many different things on our to-do lists, but there might be one that we're more in the mood for than another. So don't feel like you have to stick to the plan. If you suddenly feel the surge of inspiration or excitement to jump into a task that you weren't planning to do then, Go for it. As long as you're making sure to get that one thing done that's gonna reduce your stress like I talked about before, then it's kind of a free for all in the sense of if you have to get all these things done, go for what excites you. It's kind of like boating, like if you're following the current versus if you're fighting against it. I mean, if you can just go with the flow so that you can get into that literal flow state and be more productive, go with it. Don't fight against the current if you're really not feeling a task in the moment, unless of course it's something that you immediately need to get done. But I guess I'm just saying, don't feel so constrained to what you had planned or structured out in your day that you don't take advantage of these natural flow states. My seventh piece of advice is pretty basic, but it's so important. And that is to get good sleep and to eat regularly throughout the day. If you're starving yourself and you're not getting fuel, you're just gonna be less productive. If you're not giving yourself the time and the space to actually sleep, that's gonna be a problem too. Part of good sleep hygiene is also maybe not taking naps or giving yourself so much time to sleep that you end up having insomnia or trouble sleeping. So it's more complicated than just giving yourself more time to sleep. It's having very intentional sleep, making sure that you're getting a good number of hours of sleep per night but also being restrictive about it so that it doesn't mess with your sleep. You can look up sleep hygiene if you wanna know more about what I meant by all of that, but basically just make sure that you're giving yourself the time to get good sleep and to regularly eat. Those things are what give you energy to do the work you need to do. An eighth piece of advice, and this one is really important to me personally, is just to take some time to remember the big picture and meaning. And what I mean by that is like, what is it that you care about in your life? What are your values? What are your actual priorities in life? And just look at the big picture. Sometimes remembering about why you chose a field in the first place, what initially attracted you to it, and also what else in your life you value, maybe your relationships or other hobbies you have, can help get you focused and give you that surge of momentum that you need to keep going forward. I think it's so easy for the novelty of a job to wear off and that eventually often we get tired of the day-to-day -day work that we have to do, but remembering why you chose this job in the first place, even if it wasn't your top dream job ever, there was something about it that seemed like a good idea to you in the first place. Bringing yourself back to that and kind of appreciating it and then also remembering all the other things in your life that you care about and really focusing on the bigger picture and the sense of meaning you have in your life can allow you to let go of the little bumps in the road or the stressors that might kind of deter you from getting down to work and focusing. My ninth piece of advice is to spend more time on harder tasks. And basically where this is coming from is they've done studies on elite violinists showing those that are the best performers aren't those who just practice the most, it's those who practice the hardest portions of what they have to do the most. And although I'm definitely not an elite violinist, I kind of know what they mean because I actually play the violin and I've noticed when I'm practicing a really hard passage over and over again, it ends up improving my overall performance on the whole piece better than if I just played the whole thing again and again and again. Sometimes really focused 15 minutes of practice is way more impactful at improving my performance than an hour of playing a really long piece over and over again. And so this kind of connects back to that idea of work smarter, not harder. But think about 
in whatever line of work you're in or whatever you need to do, what's the hard parts that you could just do and focus on and really work at to improve your performance? Really be intentional about what you're gonna approach first and getting the most bang for your buck done. It really kind of relates to that first piece of advice I even gave in this video about picking that one thing that you've been avoiding or that would be the biggest accomplishment for you. It's that same idea of being really intentional about how am I gonna approach doing this thing or learning this thing or accomplishing this task in the most efficient way. And I definitely think in all things that I do, if I focus more of my energy on those harder tasks, I end up getting way more payoff in the long run. My 10th piece of advice is also to just get started. So often procrastination is this kind of chain of behavior that once we start to procrastinate, we get into the spiral of procrastination. I definitely have been there. I'm definitely a procrastinator historically. So if you're someone like me, maybe this is an especially good piece of advice is to just figure out what are the barriers for me in getting started? Like what are those things that come to my mind? Maybe thoughts that I have that keep me from getting started. Maybe it's distractions or things that just get in the way somehow. Make it easy for yourself to get started. And once you do that, it's gonna be easier to get into that flow state and just get more done overall. So really just focus on jumping in and what you can do to make that more possible or easier for you. My 11th piece of advice is to stop multitasking. And this one is supported by a lot of research showing that set shifting or basically switching between tasks is a big drain on our working memory, basically our consciousness of what we're doing in a given moment. And if we're multitasking, we're just not gonna be as efficient. So if you can just focus on one task at a time, you're way more likely to be efficient and get things done much more quickly so that then you can go have fun. My 12th piece of advice is to plan your day the day before. So maybe at the end of a work day, you start a routine where you think about what is it tomorrow that I need to get done. Sometimes it's easier to think the day before because it's not right ahead of you. So you're able to figure out, oh, what is that one thing I need to get done? What are other secondary things I'd really like to get done? How do I wanna structure my day? And by planning it and writing it down the day before, it's just way more likely that you're gonna be efficient and get things done that next day. In general, I would just say that I think this mindset of that we need to be working all the time and the most productive people are people that work at all hours of the day and are just constantly working. It's just not realistic. And there's so many of us who just kind of fake it, who so much of the workday aren't actually being really productive. I mean, if you think about it, how many hours of your workday are you actually in that flow state where you're super focused? So I think the question is, how can you be more efficient and get yourself into that flow state? Not how can I work more hours of the day? Because so often we end up just kind of faking it if we're focused on just working more. I truly believe that being intentional about our work, thinking how we can be more efficient and more effective and more precise is gonna have a way better payoff than just thinking we have to work harder. I think it's so easy for people to be hard on themselves, to say, I'm not working hard enough. But the truth is, no matter how hard you're working, you can always be working harder. So let's take a step back and just accept, this is the amount I can work, and how can I be the most efficient with it? Because also, if we don't get a healthy work-life balance, if we don't take breaks, if we don't spend time with the people we love and do other things that we enjoy, we're just gonna get burnt out and be way less efficient. And so again, I guess I'm saying, look at it from the big picture. How can I be more efficient overall? So if any of you have ideas about how to be more productive and efficient, please share them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And if you ended up liking this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button below. So that's really all I have for you today, but thank Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye! <laughs>